Hey, what's going on everybody? Boylon here, and today we're actually doing a character orb opening and unlock and hopefully some gameplay footage of Mighty Thor. So Mighty Thor is in the game. I did tell people that I was going to spend my cores finally because there hasn't been a lot of a reason for me to use my cores on previous characters because while well, Gambit wasn't even available uh, for power core purchases and I am kind of going into this hero as guardian team. So we're sitting at about 14 and a half thousand power cores. So we're going to be pulling some red stars. Hopefully we get lucky. We're going to then uh, spend as many power cores as I need to to unlock her at three star and then we're going to do some gameplay footage not based on my character but we're actually going to be doing it based on one of my alliance mates yasha to yasha troy uh who unlocked uh mighty thor before me and has it on war defense we're going to do some play testing on that team he's actually the biggest um, member of my alliance tcp wise so i think that's appropriate so that's all in today's video so if you're ready to go now let's can we boil down our video well that's what we're going to do so let's go boil it down You can tell I kind of did that on the fly. Can we boil down an orb? I don't think I've done an orb opening video since we started saying that. Anyways, uh, she's in the the orbs here now. I'm not going to be using my red star orbs, my basics, because honestly, if you can, you should save your red star orbs, your standard basic red star orbs, for the 10 times dark promotion credit uh, period of time. That's going to be the best bang for your buck. If you cannot, because you have not been able to save enough elite orbs, then... I guess you have to if you want to, uh, but otherwise that's what I've been doing. When we pulled for Sunfire on my live stream, I actually just pulled one Elite Four and I got an Elite Five Sunfire. Uh, so I'm not sure if we're going to get the same luck. That being said, we do have 16 Red Star Orbs of the Elite Four nature. I, I, uh, I, I might actually go for five because now that I'm unlocking her a bit early, that means that I might actually have the shards available by the end of July. And for those of you who don't remember, uh, I did put out a video on Mighty Thor that she is the month long July character. So do keep that in mind as well. So between the shards from that and the shards from today, I might be able to get her to a five star. So I, I, I'm gonna pull two because I want to save the other two for Valkyrie because I know for a fact that we will get a five star for Valkyrie because she's gonna be part of that campaign event later on I guess in July at some point so we'll start off with two elite fives and then go to elite fours and then hopefully we don't have to pull too many and then of course do the regular orbs so let's get us started there's not a lot of characters honestly that I'm looking for even in the five and above category that wouldn't be a dupe at this stage but who knows? Maybe we'll get above. Maybe we got some good luck. So so let's let's go, everyone. Standard luck. Five Lady Death Strike. That's a really good pull, but unfortunately for me, a dupe. I do have a six. No, do I have a five? I don't know how many I have. Anyways, that goes into Elite Six credits. So 750 Elite Six credits. I haven't pulled any fives in a while, actually. Uh, so let's do one more. Oh my god! Oh, what? What? Okay, I don't know if I, uh, I... I don't use her that much, but that is really, really good. From a 5 to a 7, and an upgrade from a 4. That's a really good pull. Good for the focus for Yo-Yo, but I... I I, I'm not even sure if I have her at gear tier 14. If I don't, I should probably do that now. Uh, I might get some value out of that in Scourge now, but I, I, I don't know. Anyways, that's the end of the five. Actually, no, I got one more five now. How did I get that? As a dupe, I guess. Okay, we're going to do one more five. That's, wow, that's incredible. And now, of course, my luck's going to be shit. Oh, we got Thor! Great, I'm so glad I decided to pull that extra. Wow, we, so we got a five red... Mighty Thor, which is great, and a 7 yo-yo. Let's take a look at yo-yo really quick while, we, while we're here in the video. And see what kind of changes that makes her... I do have her at gear tier 14, actually, so that's really good. Wow! <laughs> her stats... I need to get her levels up now. Oh my god, do I need to like take her to 85 because I did that? Holy crap. Focus... Yeah, the stats... She's not a damage character, but, you know, her stats did go up quite considerably. <sighs> Maybe I'm gonna have to put some gold into her to 85 because that is uh, that is a it's been a very long time since I've got a seven pull actually since Squirrel Girl a natural seven pull uh, it's been I think Squirrel Girl was the last time I pulled a seven red from an orb 
So that's quite crazy. Uh, but we're here for Mighty Thor. We did get a 5, so I'm really happy about that. We got a 5 red. So let's go on over to the orb section now. And we're going to pull some orbs for her. Maybe we can carry over some of this luck. To I feel like I just blew all my luck. Uh, but if only that, that 7 red would have been translated into like a 60 plus shard orb, that would have been amazing. Uh, so we're going to, I think at a bare minimum, we need to, if I'm not mistaken, we need to pull about 16 orbs. Uh, if I get them all at 6, it's 100 divided by 6. 16 in that, so 7 actually, times 675 cores. So at a maximum, we have to spend 11,000. Uh, 250 cores, but that's probably pretty unlikely because we'll probably get, uh, you know, more than, I hope, more than six shards in that many uh, orbs. So let's start, and I hope, we'll see what we end up, uh, 14,500, and we'll see what we end up at the end. So one six to start. Not surprised after blowing my luck on that yo-yo, apparently. Uh, another eight. So if we can get three eights, we actually are up one orb. <laughs> but if we can get, oh! Oh my god! Oh my god, we got a 60. That was worth 10 orbs. I don't know what to believe anymore. 74 shards. I. <sighs> okay, so in the month long events, you typically get a maximum of 180 shards, which means that I would need 130 in order to get to five star, right? So I'm going to pull up to 130 shards. That way, by the end of July, if I get all the shards, then I should have a five star. That's what we're going to do here. Because we got that 60, I'm going to invest some more cores on this and maybe we'll get some extra luck as well. Or maybe I've just killed it all. Uh, but we got an 8, so we need an extra, that's 82, I think, so we need an extra 48 shards. So I, 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 I'll I, put the cores towards that, I think at this point uh, it's probably worth it. Uh, and now, of course, everything's going to be 6. But that, that 60 was, holy shit, that was super stellar. Can we get, like, another, uh, yeah, it's going to be probably trash, like, up until we get to 130. But maybe, maybe not. We got an 8, so what are we at now? 102, so we need 28 more shards. Wow. Okay, we got a blue. 12. It's not bad. That cuts off an orb, actually. Uh, so that's 114, 16 more shards. 120. So two, two more orbs at a bare minimum. So that's still pretty good, though, I would say. A blue. Well, no, maybe we got it there. 10. That's exactly how much we need at 130 shards. So I'm going to stop there. And 77, 79 orb uh, cores. Uh, that means that I spent uh, just under 7,000 cores to get me here. That was some really stellar luck. I am super happy about that. Uh, now we're going to unlock her, and then we're going to build her up. Uh, I'm not going to go through that with you guys, so we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back, take a look at Mighty Thor, and then take her... No, not, not take her into battle. We're going to be battling her with one of my teams, so stay tuned. All right, and we're back here in the roster window here with Mighty Thor at gear tier 13, level 70. This is as far as I'm going to be taking her up today. I am going to at least take her to gear tier 14 and probably level 85, actually, because I'm going to be heavily investing into this team. Uh, but I am going to try and, you know, min-max my gold milestone a little bit, despite, you know, probably going well over that today. Uh, so what I want to talk about here in this section, though, is I want to talk about the T4s. Also ISOs, uh, so I actually, let's go back. So I have decided to put Striker ISO on Mighty Thor, and that's largely because of her follow-up on her basic attack. So if you notice that she clears two positive effects on this, so when you do the Striker attack, that is also going to do that, which I think is a very good mechanic. Uh, her passive that is related to the charge only hits one target, so I'm not going to be using Raider for that reason, whereas I think that Raider is actually a really good choice for someone like Thor, who has tons of multi-attacks, and his passive is like multi-attack as well. Uh, so this is what we're going to be doing here as far as t4s go i'm not gonna just yet stick it on the the basic uh, because it's just damage that doesn't mean it's bad because it's piercing damage uh, but i want to focus on the ones that i think are going to do more or have more effects uh shards of mjolnir her special again also just kind of piercing damage but it does hit adjacent targets so i would more likely get this uh, than the basic first however i am also not going to pick that up at this time uh ride the lightning now this is what you do want to get because because, again, not only is it piercing, everything's piercing damage, it's 80% extra piercing damage to all enemies, but it also adds that blind to the primary target. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that without it. So we're going to click that.
that. We're going to get the T4 for Ride the Lightning and then the Goddess of Thunder passive. It adds 100% damage and always applies charge to self and chargeable hero as guardians, aka Thor and Valkyrie when she comes out. If you don't have this, it is, I believe, only a 25% chance, which is very low. So this goes from 25 to 100% with the tier 4, and this is super important to using them. Of course, I'm not going to go through the entire kit. Uh, do check that out in MSF.GG or on here later if you want to see the full kit in its entirety uh, because that will take a while to spell out. I've already done that on previous videos, so we're going to get that. We get the damage and the guaranteed charge, so when you're using them together, that's going to be super important. So that's it. Those are my recommendations for starting tier 4s uh, for Mighty Thor if you want to build her the passive the ultimate and then i would probably go special and, and basic you know when you're ready to do that if you so wish and then striker iso is my personal recommendation so let's do some gameplay footage now of fighting my alliance mates uh hero as guardians okay so here we are in war uh this is the war defense practice mode of course and we have here his team 844k with the uh, as guardians with hella now, I asked him to put on Hela instead of Loki because I want to see what kind of benefit uh, Hela gives to the team. I also want to see whether or not the Sibius can actually counter this anymore or not. I've heard that it's a challenging time. Uh, this is in security, so we are going to get the defense down. I I'm pretty... I'm pretty sure you still get those, don't you? Or do you not? Uh, but but anyways, uh, or maybe you don't get the rune bonuses, I forgot. It's been a while since I've used ward defense uh, or, or ward practice. So we're going to go in with my symbiotes, and I want to see whether or not that's still a thing or not. It's been a while since I've actually used them. So I'm at 815k to his 633 uh, that being said, uh, Heimdall is at gear tier 13 and Mighty Thor is only gear tier 13. Uh, but Thor, Hela is 15 and Sif is 14. And so I want to see how much of a difference does the passive from Mighty Thor give. And by the way, they also have resistance to heal block now. So 50% 50, 50 resistance to heal block. And the extra stats that Hela has, actually she gives to Mighty Thor as well. Because it's just as Guardian writ large. Whereas some of them, some of the traits for both Valkyrie and uh, Mighty Thor are hero as Guardians. But Hela's actually works for everyone. So I'm curious to see how this translates. So I want to kind of do this first. Let's check this out. I put this on two times so we can kind of take a look. So I'm going to approach this the kind of the same way that I would have done otherwise. And now that Loki's not on the field, uh, that basically means that under 50%, they're not going to go into stealth. So I'm going to target first on Thor, because this is probably what I would do to start. And I'd obviously want to take advantage of, you know, killing... Uh, Greg, because that's normally what you do when you're playing with Hela. But now, as you can see, he's starting to build his charges, and I'm wondering whether or not that's going to make a significant difference or not. You know, this is what I would normally do under on normal matches. But then Thor is getting this, right? And I could try and, you know, make the heal block. And it actually, it, it landed that time, surprisingly. And then that goes off. And that does a lot more damage than it did, than it did previously. And so now we're stuck behind the taunt. And now it makes me wonder... Whether or not we're in trouble, <laughs> we get some alts there. That's the alt from Mighty Thor, which kind of flips some of my buffs. And I'm kind of on the ropes now. I, somehow I managed to let Sif taunt, and now I'm kind of in trouble. I'm not sure if I can actually clear this or not. Because then we're going to trigger more and more uh, of, of, you know, we can revive screen here. But we're going to be triggering way more of these passives from Thor and we can't really get to him and it's just going to kick the sh wow I'm actually kind of surprised uh you know we can try and get through the taunt we did there with with Venom and you know it's still quite a bit of a challenge I would say you know we can take these buffs you might still be able to win and maybe Valkyrie really helps out here but I feel like there's oh well that was a bit unlucky we we could probably still get through Thor okay so maybe they can still win <laughs> uh, but it's not as easy as it once was. I think that, you know, it, also to be fair, uh, you know, it's not a full, I'm a full gear tier 15 symbiotes. They're not. So uh, that makes a pretty big difference there. But I think that things could go sideways if you're not careful. And I think part of the problem, to be honest, was that I actually landed the, or maybe it wasn't a problem. Good for me, I guess, uh, that I actually managed to land the heal block, whereas, you know, uh, it can get resisted. So Mighty Thor does do a fair bit of damage. You saw that it did a disrupt there instead of actually doing the stun the turn bar rewind. Uh, the special does different things. I'm, I'm really just trying to get into Thor. 
And Thora is being particularly beefy. Now, keep in mind, though, this is without a lot of the rune bonuses, without barracks, without, you know, all those kind of other things, the med bay. And it's not as easy. And Sif actually does taunt as well under 50% health. So don't forget about that. So this wasn't a clean, clear one shot that it probably would have been otherwise. Is Hela a good idea to have on this team? Or is Loki the better choice here? And it makes you wonder, because if Hela's not there, then obviously you can't take advantage of the Gregs. And so it makes me wonder whether or not things would have gone significantly different. There's a good chance that it might have, actually. And so now we're running into problems, and obviously we wiped. So this is not a one-shot, but obviously you probably could have come in here and do a two-shot. So uh, let's try a different team. Let's try something different. Now, I don't want to use a legendary team because I think that might be a bit too obvious. At least I would think. You know, something like a Weapon Axe, something like a Dark Hold, I think it's probably obviously going to kill them. Uh, but I want to kind of maybe try something that's a little bit... A little bit less. Uh, let's try... I'm thinking... We could try Weapon X anyways, but I, I think that's going to be a pretty obvious thing to do. So... It, it is one of my bigger teams, though. Let's... Let's go with uh, new warriors. I'm thinking new warriors. Let's let's try that. So new warriors with I don't know what I normally use them with actually. Uh, do I even have them? Yeah. So I, normally I do this actually. No, I, I don't use Shuri anymore. I, I use Hella though, with on offense actually, with but I, but that's gonna change right because I'm gonna be putting them on my own more defense too. Um. Clearly, I was not prepared for this choice. So let's just go in with someone who doesn't impact too much and we're gonna choose uh, I don't even know wow this is embarrassing um, we're gonna use we're gonna use Zemo and I am going to use T'Challa where's my T'Challa these are kind of like extra characters that I often have, and I, I realize I should have put T'Challa in them somewhere else to take buffs from other characters. Probably between Zemo, actually, would have been the better choice. We're going to do this, and I just want to see, you know, just like how, how meta are they, how, how tough are they. Probably without Valkyrie, it's going to be a pretty significant difference. The reason why I decided to use Deathpool is because obviously you're taking advantage of Greg kills here. Uh, we're going to go in with the ability block on Mighty Thor. And now keep in mind, though, this is a gear tier 13 Mighty Thor. I don't know why I did the blind. I should have done the... the <laughs> should have done anything else. So we're going to go with the basic here, because that's going to cleave. And yeah, it seems like if you do want to take them out like just like this, it's not going to be too hard if you use this team. Actually, I probably didn't even need T'Challa, and I could have just used it with uh, Zemo and the three of them. So that I spent more time deciding on my pick than actually than how difficult it was there. Keep in mind, though, that my Cloak is tier 16, my T'Challa is tier... everyone else is tier 15, so as far as matchups go, you're not getting the buffs, and, and th this seems like they might be similar to Young Avengers, is what I'm thinking, you know, because Young Avengers really required the extra buffs uh, from the rooms to really give them the extra stats that was needed, and I'm thinking that might be the same for Hero as Guardians. Are they... nobody is ever going to be uh, you know, they're not going to be like a Heroes for Hire was when they came out. So I think our expectations need to be kind of uh, lowered down a little bit. But obviously, this is just preliminary. So yeah, if you see it, maybe Hell is not the best choice. And let me do, let me know in the comments down below what you think, if you who you should have in that fifth slot. And maybe it shouldn't be Hela or Loki. Maybe it could be just another really good uh, war character. Let me know what your thoughts are and maybe some other characters to include on this. This is just a preliminary testing to go with my orb opening video. I am going to have a secondary video. We're going to have more time to test this, I think, as well in the coming days as well. See what's best, what the best combos to use with this team is currently until Valkyrie comes out and what we can do with it in the meantime. So uh, that's the end of this video. And until next time, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you all later. Boylan signing out.